today we're going to talk about how do jumbo loans work and the four steps to getting a jumbo mortgage. Step one, identify if you actually need a jumbo mortgage. So I actually had a friend recently who's like, Jen, I need a jumbo mortgage. And I was like, send me the house you're trying to buy. It was $300,000. That is not a jumbo mortgage. So the way you can quickly find out is what I want you to do is you're going to go to your computer. Are you ready? And you're going to put in your county. So let's just say we're in Texas and Harris County. You're going to do Harris County conforming loan limit 2021. Okay. Now what's going to come up is if you were doing that search 548 250. However, in other parts of the country, it can be higher. It might be 720. It might be 760. Um, it could be 800. It depends on where you live in the country. Now, the bulk of the United States as of 2021 is at 548 250. What happens is every single year, um, the prices of homes are reviewed and often they will go up. I think this year is gonna be very interesting to see if, if county limits go up in Florida and Texas because wow, we've seen those property values jump and it suddenly went from a conforming market to a jumbo market like that. So we generally find out in November what the loan limits for conforming loans are gonna be for the following year. But for this example today, your county conforming loan limit 2021, okay? And that will tell you what the conforming loan limit is. Now, if you're looking at a two unit, three unit, four unit, that loan limit is higher. Yes, one's single family units are different than two, three, and four. And generally there's a grid that will show you all the different amounts. Now, if you are five cents, one cent, $10, whatever, above that county loan limit, you're now in a jumbo loan. So step one was identify if you even need a jumbo loan. Step two, I would talk to a couple different lenders and I would say, hey, I'm thinking I need a jumbo loan. Can you please let me know what is your minimum credit score? How many months of reserves do you need? What is the down payment requirement? Okay, now you can phrase this in different ways. Now, if you know you're gonna put down 20%, I would say, say, hey, I'm gonna put down 20%. What is your minimum credit score? What is your reserves? And then the last question, what is your debt to income? Okay, and I would say, and based on XYZ, what is your 30 year rate today? If you're shopping and you wanna do this to everyone and start a spreadsheet because the thing that I can tell you, so I work at a very large mortgage company where we have 16, 20 jumbo investors and we actually have a grid. I'm not kidding. We have a grid that breaks down all the differences between them because jumbo mortgages are not like conventional mortgages. You could have one where they want 12 months of reserves. What reserves are is principal interest taxes and insurance that's set aside for after you close your loan in your bank account, or it might be in your retirement, you know, or it could be a stock account. And they'll have different amounts required and they may even require that like, you know, some investors are fine with that money being in your retirement, some are not, right? So if you're talking to a lender and they just go to the lowest rate, there's a very good chance you will not qualify for that investor. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're talking to banks, the important thing to know with a bank is a bank has one option for you. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Often if people have private banking relationships, there can be a benefit to that and it is worth exploring. But for the bulk of, for the bulk of us, for everyone else that doesn't have a private banking relationship because we're not billionaires, um, it's good to talk to a lender that has multiple investors and multiple options. And the reason I say that is because we'll have people where the realtor's like, oh, they were declined, you know, can you just look at it? And I'll look and I'll be like, oh yeah, you know, no problem. I've got this 5% down program up to 850. And I gotta tell you guys, that program, the 5% down to 850 is so magical in pretty much every state except for California and New York because of how low the loan limits are. So a bank doesn't have that right? Probably not. I haven't seen one. Maybe, maybe by the time it's airs, but you want to make sure you're exploring all options. So talking to a lender that has multiple investors, that can be a really good idea. Now, 
The other thing is sometimes people call me and they expect me just to rattle off every single investor's guidelines. No, I'm seriously, like I ask people, I'm like, look, if you're really serious about this, please fill out an application. I wanna get all of your documents. I wanna know what I'm looking at. Like I need to look at the way your assets are structured. I need to look at your credit report. I need to see how many trade lines you have. I need to see your rental history. Like I wanna see everything because then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull rates because it will lay out who's at the lowest. And then I'm gonna be looking at the top three investors. So I'm gonna be going through that matrix with a highlighter <laughs> to make sure that you meet all the guidelines. And the reason is, is that jumbo loans have gotchas to them. It has gotchas to them. So just so you guys know the way my business is broken out, I am probably 50% VA. I do a good amount of VA jumbo, totally different world. VA jumbo, easy, cut and dry, no drama. Conventional jumbo, different world, okay? And you know, I do uh, VA, FHA, conventional, used to do USDA, jumbo has more tricks to it every single day, every single day. And also you guys are playing with larger loan amounts, larger, earn larger earnest money. Like you need to make sure that your lender is doing the homework up front so that you don't end up in a position where you can't close. And the other caveat I'm gonna add to that, and we'll make this number three, okay? So number one was, are you a jumbo loan? Number two was reach out to some lenders to figure out like where their guidelines are, figure out who you wanna you know, potentially work with, do an application, provide them with all the information so they can make sure you check guidelines. Um, number three is going to be, tell them everything, okay? If you're divorced, and you have to pay child support or alimony and you're like, oh, they'll never find out. We do, we always find out, just tell us. Like, let us approach this from the front. Two-year rental history, that comes up a lot with Jumbo. Like, they want to see that you've made your payments and I think every single investor is gonna be requiring that within the next month because of what's happened with um, people not paying their rent for the last few years. In many cases, it was because they couldn't afford it. In other cases, it wasn't. So I do think you will have to provide a two-year rental history. So if you have a blip in that, tell us up front. Like, we need to look at everything you think might be a problem up front. If you're like, oh, I bought a car like two days ago, but they probably won't know, we'll find out at the end. Just tell us. If you tell us everything up front, we can tell you if it's gonna be a problem, if it's not gonna be a problem, if we think we can solve it, if we need to reach out to an underwriter versus you know getting into a purchase where you put a big chunk of money down at risk, you pay money for inspections, money for appraisals, and then we find out and it blows up. We don't like blow ups. No one wants a blow up. I don't want that happening you know, with your guys' money. That is literally my worst nightmare. That and new construction issues. But yeah, it's not good. So please be very, very, very transparent. Okay, and number four, okay? Number four. So you found out it was a jumbo loan, you selected your lender, you provided them all the documentation, you were super blunt about everything that's ever happened in your life, okay? You're pre-approved now, you're shopping. So what's the number four thing? Okay, the number four thing is, is that when you're looking, I do think you should actually get pre-approved by two separate lenders. I know a lot of lenders are gonna hate me for saying that, but I think that with Jumbo, it's important. The reason is, is that sometimes you'll see investor guideline changes. So you may be qualified for a program where this lender is saying no problem, but no other lender can do it and something like that would be a red flag for me. Like if I'm buying a house, I wanna make sure that if this lender can't perform for some reason, this lender can. So when you get to the point that your offer has been accepted or you're starting to get really serious, you wanna check in with both lenders, you wanna check on closing time, um, and you also wanna check to make sure everything you were originally pre-approved for is the same. Now, if you guys change your job, if your credit score changes, anything that changes in your life. If you lend $50,000 to your mom, but she paid you back, so no worries. No, that could be a worry. You need to tell us once again and update us. If you follow those four steps, then once you're in contract, it should be a breeze, okay? Now, if you don't do any of that and you just get in contract and start calling lenders, well, think about all that work that goes into those first four steps. And that's what you're gonna be doing when you're under a time crunch and that is not fun for anyone. It's not fun for you, it's not fun for the lenders and 
I don't want to risk your money, neither does anyone else. So if you guys have questions or comments, I am licensed in 46 states. Yes, almost everywhere. So I'm happy to help you with your mortgage needs, happy to talk to you guys about all of this. Um, feel free to reach out. Thanks for watching.